Hell y'all. Welcome to part two of my Austrian Empire Hitler Path played through in the Hearts of Iron 4 mod Red Flood. In part one, the old Kaiser of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, died, and then his successor, Karl, died. Now in the focus tree, we must get done with the bloodiest week as well as like, say, I don't know, 12, 13, 12 to 13 other focuses. So we're doing the bloodiest week for now, and that will take some time. We have all of our divisions watching Hungary doing whatever. Brazil is fighting Brazil for whatever reason. There's a civil war there between the Brazilian Popular Republic and the United States of Brazil. All right then. So what can we do? No template. I think that's for artillery pieces. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Insufficient resources. Yes. I know. We gotta somehow get more resources. Let's trade with France, maybe for some steel. Trade with Portugal for some tungsten. Trade with Malaya for some rubber. And trade with avant-garde France for some aluminum. Well, we have a, a lack of civilian factories. That's not good. The bloodiest week is done. I'm primarily just going to read the effects of these focuses instead of their descriptions. So we're going to do winning over to workers. Once this is done, it will give... Oh. Skandabeg the fourth is coronated in Albania, it seems. And once this focus is done, there's a civil war in Japan now. Once this focus is done, the rush of vengeance national spirit will be modified to give us less daily political power loss per day, it seems. Yeah, there's the Japanese civil war. So here's the rush of vengeance national spirit. And we're going to need to get a little bit of political power, please. So effectively, Carl the First got assassinated, and now Franz Joseph the Second's government and his supporters are out. They're just vengeful about his death. And he was Carl the First. Oh my goodness! I'm trying to read all these, trying to rethink through the story here, and read all the other stuff happening in the world. But in the context of Red Flood, Carl the First in our playthrough, he died on his in the coronation in Prague, essentially. When he was becoming Kaiser, someone assassinated him, and we have a couple new divisions here. Lovely, Korea is going to fight Korea. Korea versus Korea versus Korea. Korean declarations of independence. All right, then. So there's a Korean Civil War, a Japanese Civil War, and a Brazilian Civil War. Oh, boy. Winning over to workers is done. Let's now complete rooting out the Reds. This will remove the national spirit red threat which is giving us some negative effects. So basically the government's going to crack down on any communist or socialist within the country, I think, possibly. Research slot available. Let me see here. Go ahead and start researching concentrated industry one, as well as, say, I don't know, the next artillery upgrade. Do all that. Also get mechanical computing started. Go ahead and start doing that. And what in the world? The Russian National Peasant Republic exists at this point. I see. It definitely is a thing. Evidently, in Thorvald, Stoning is re-elected Danish Prime Minister. Okay. There's a Romanianist victory in Moldova. So they had a election, it seems. Interesting. Very interesting. And we're waiting for rooting out the Reds to be done. That will remove that national spirit, so give it a little bit more time. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and do populist overtours. I might as well read this, I guess. So it says, is the imperial system out of touch with the wishes of the general population? Some would say yes, many of them not even communist. Adolf Pozo's Big Ten of Nationalists does demonstrate the existence of the populist current on the right. With the imperial house on shakier footing than ever, Perhaps it is time to signal our openness to change. Our establishment, there's the Persian Civil War. Our establishment, our establishment in Harnhaus should not be seen as the arch enemy of the people, or else the whole structure is at risk. Let the people know and start discussion with our allies. And so that focus will give us an event and also decrease and increase the popularity of some ideologies in the Austrian Empire. What do I research? Let me research, say, planes. Get close air support. Research close air support. Do that. There's the Treaty of Liège. Liège? That was in 
I think France took over Wallonia. That is what occurred there. Populous over tours is done. Now let's complete this focus here. Establish emergency powers. Do that. And there's the summer coup war. Interesting. The Moldovan dictatorship. What in the world? So now there's a dictatorship in Moldova. Who is really Moldova? It's the Moldovan state. Who controls it? Oh, so the... Okay. Interesting. So establish emergency powers will be done. I did not get that event, I think. Oh well. I thought I'd get it after populist overtours. Maybe I'm just waiting to get it. But it says here, the strengthening and purification of Austria requires a legal basis. So essentially, I think what it's going to happen here, the Kaiser is going to give... It's going to, I don't know, it's going to modify the Russia of Vengeance national spirit a little bit. And what this will do is cause us to lose less political power daily. And was, is this part of the focus? Okay, to placate the people, yeah. We did populist overtours, now we get the folk, we get the, we get the event to placate the people. Today, the Reichswath have proposed a new bill to the Kaiser, coming from the seats of Adolf Pozo's AHVP. The proposal covers an immediate response to the protest of the Austrian workers. Pozo, him, Pozo himself has called the reform the only cure for the plague of communism, his apparently, apparently. His rhetoric, his rhetoric, I'm just reading the focus, reading this event here. His rhetoric gave him a majority in the council, with most of the lesser peoples getting behind a proposal. The reform itself can be described as an appeasement to the workers, including expansions of their rights and welfare measures, such as higher minimum wage or guaranteed days off. Indisputably, if the Kaiser was to accept this proposal, many of the less ideological protesters would feel satisfied and leave their strikes soon to restore order. However, our Minister of Economy, Ludwig, Ludwig von Mises, has harshly criticized the proposal. He noted its populist character and the disregard for our conditions and broader economic policy. In his argument, the short-term gain of the workers' loyalty wouldn't outweigh the long-term turmoil that these laws would bring into our economy. Thus, Mises urges the Kaiser to veto the bill, despite its broad support among the masses and politicians. And let's choose to just have the reform pass, and this will increase Adolf Pozo's influence. So that will be done. All right. So officer corps, modify that, maybe. Military high command, Bayon government's gonna find Mantatsu, okay. Who do we get here? I don't know, just pick someone. Chief of the army, go with, say, army maneuvers, Erwin Rommel. He is the chief of the army for Austria. We're gonna make him into that. That is done. So establish emergency powers will be done very soon. Come on, fantastic. Now let's do the focus. Building White Vienna. So it says here in this focus description, it is something of an inconvenience that our capital of our capital of our fair empire is where the bulk of the socialist base lurks. While it would be tempting to unleash a crackdown and be done with it, it is national liberal victory in Romania. Okay, it is worth examining why the people of Vienna are so loyal to the opposition, as much as previous federal administration interfered. The SDAP had a strong urban reform agenda and pursued public health and housing in the city. While we dismantled their institutions, perhaps we could claim ownership of the reformist projects we don't find too object objectionable. Object objectionable. Okay, so we're going to get another event from this called re Rebuilding, no, Building White Vienna. And from this, the Modify Russia Vengeance National Spirit will be modified. So... We'll use less factories on consumer goods, I guess. And here's two new divisions for the army. Fantastic. And now there's a Spanish Civil War. Okay, then. It has begun. Yes, I can tell. Now, what do we do? Building Y Vienna is still not done yet. Okay, so what is the three sides here? We have the Iberian Communes versus the Spanish Republic versus the National Front. Very interesting leader there it seems. And there's a war in Africa, I believe. Oh, Revolutionary Japan. Some happened in the Japanese War. The Tanjnikin Revolt. That is... Okay, What? Ha so they were able to get a peace treaty. Wow. So building White Vienna is done. Is it? I guess we get an event from that, probably. Yeah. So let's sideline SDAP. That will give us... That will take 35 days. And from that focus, 
the popularity of progressivism, progressivism within the country will, de will decrease a little bit. And so the SDAP is falling out of favor, essentially, with the government of the Austrian Empire following the demise of Karl, since the monarchy is just reacting so harsh against them, it seems, and just leftist movements in general within the nation in this playthrough. And so it says here, Building White Vienna. Vienna being our capital and the first place to explode into, into the flames of socialist riots is the key position where we need to establish our power to prevent the spread of the Reds to other parts of the Empire. One plan to achieve this is to utilize the workers themselves. Not all of them are communists. Many belong to the so-called, quote, Fatherland Trade Unions, and, unquote, that were caught up in the chaos of the protests, showing them that the government wants no harm for the proletariat and, un and only aims to halt and only aims to halt the destructive march of communism could give us powerful allies in the fight. What we need is solid promises and an assurance of our goodwill. Gaining their trust, we can use the worker patriotic agitators to get a large part of the disoriented workers off strike, thus calming down the situation in Vienna. However, some, mem however, some members of our cabinet, with Ludwig von Mises on their lead, warn of such alliances with potentially dubious elements. What seems like a lucrative deal, deal now might have grave consequences in the future. Mises points out to the patriotic proletarian movement connections to Adolf Pozo's AHVP, a potentially dangerous faction that despite its anti-socialism frequently engages in revolutionary rhetoric against our monarchy. If the AHVP gained too much influence, it could mark the end of our empire with a blow from the right rather than the left. Instead, Mises proposes to place our trust in the state police and the factory owner's own attempts to handle the situation. And let's choose to give the people, we need to have the people on our side, give support to the patriotic unions. This will increase Adolf Pozo's influence. Our aim, ultimately, is to increase Adolf Pozo's influence as much as possible. The Transylvanian conspiracy succeeds. What is going on in Transylvania? I have no clue what's going on in Transylvania or in Moldova. That's all I can say. Something happened in Romania also. They had like a election? Is that what happened? Maybe? I don't know. I'm just sort of trying to keep track of what's happening in Austria. Honestly. And somebody was elected as chairman in Transylvania. Okay. And now we must wait for sideline SDAP to be done. Come on. A few more days there. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Please, go along. Two days. Two days. Let's unshackle the paramilitaries. That will take 35 days. And Technocracy Inc. wins the American general election. So they're accelerationists now, which is a special ideology within Red Flood. They are the yeah, other technocrats, essentially. So we're going to do the focus on shackle the paramilitaries once it's done. The popularity of right-wing authoritarianism, right authoritarianism will increase. And this will modify the Russia Vengeance National Spirit to provide us with 5% war support and modify national rumblings by providing us with a higher recruitable population factor. So that is what we're going to do. Concentrated Industry 1 is done. Good. Now let's go ahead and start doing Excavation 1 as well as, say, Support Weapons 2. Start doing that now. Lovely. So we just got to wait a little bit there. I think so come on give that a little bit of time yes how many days six days okay after that we'll have about I think maybe six focuses left yes yeah, six focuses left in this part of the focus tree it is currently almost end of 1936 so far so we're just trying to get through all these focuses let's now complete subdue white Prague so it says here through the influx of what does it say Though the influx of Germans fleeing Spartacus oppression has helped to dilute the power of Czech nationalism, the Kaiser's death has proven that we have gone, we have not gone nearly far enough in suppressing bandits and communists. But of course, this also presents us with the political coverage to, to, take, to take the gloves off when handling them. Once we're done with that, let us see what reforms to the political landscape of the city are necessary to ensure that, if they won't be Germans, they will at least be acquiescent imperial subjects. 
So essentially we're going to lose some civilian factories and infrastructure in Moravia, Bohemia, and Lower Austria. Oh no, we're going to get one civilian factory in Lower Austria and lose infrastructure and civilian factories in Bohemia and Moravia. So basically the Austrian government is going after its Czech constituents and well Slavic constituents more accurately. I guess because it sees them as a threat, maybe, I don't know. I believe that's the idea, perhaps, I think, within this playthrough, Carl, well, within the narrative of the Austrian Empire, in this playthrough, Carl I, if I remember right, was, he was assassinated by a Slavic Marxist, so that may have to do with that decision there within the mod, within the playthrough, overall, in this focus. So, Subdue White Prague will be done about 10 days, so we just had to give that some time. And we have to wait there. And the White Eagles take Transylvania over. What is going on in Transylvania? Who is in charge there? So they're in an accelerationist state now. What in the world? Okay. Fascinating. But with that, what in the world? Okay. A lot of chaos in the world at this time. Just, wow. I think I'm going to end what is part two of my Austrian Empire Hitler Path playthrough in the Hearts of Iron 4 mod Red Flood here. If you enjoyed the mod, you can check it out in the video description. A link to it is there. If you enjoyed the video itself, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.